Ah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, beloved. We give God all the praise and all the glory, all the honor for the opportunity to come together again. And I want to believe that you've started the year right. Hallelujah. I believe you've started the year right. And that uh, you've organized yourself as to what you want to do this year. And that you've started praying into it. And that you are willing to pay the price and to work towards it. Hallelujah. I believe you've started your New Year resolutions and uh, you're going to stick with them and you're going to see results hallelujah that is what we we are trusting god for that you're not going to start well and end bad but that he who has begun the good work in you will show you his faithfulness and you will also work with him to bring it to the expected end so it must end well with you it must end well with you i believe that you have had a good week as well some of you have gone back to work i believe that everything is going well there uh let's get into a word of prayer today by the grace of god i'm loaded with a whole new uh, 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 series that we are starting and I believe that it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a big, 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 big blessing. So you make sure that you are listening in well and that you are sharing it and you are inviting friends to be part of this broadcast because it's going to be great. Let's share a word of prayer and then we'll go straight into it. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercies. Thank you that you love us so much and you care about us. Thank you for bringing us into this new year. Lord, we thank you for what you have done and what you will do. We know, O oh Lord, that you will hold our hands and you will guide us. Your word says that it thirsted not when you led them. Lord, so as you are leading us, we will not thirst. This afternoon, morning, evening, depending on where people are listening to me from, I pray, Lord, that you will put your word in my lips, that you will bless your children. Let knowledge increase. Let understanding increase. Let your anointing be, be released upon your children. Let healing take place. Let marriages be restored. Let confused lives be reorganized. Lord, I pray that by the time we finish this, oh God, we will know that we have had an encounter with you. We give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So we bless God. It's good to see you all. Once again, let me wish you a wonderful, happy new year. Happy new year. We thank God for his grace and for his mercies. Hallelujah. We thank God for his grace and his mercies. And I salute uh, my bishop, uh, Akotoban, for God bless you, sir for coming on we bless god we bless god for every one of you every one of you if you can hear me i'll be glad if you can comment so that i know that you can hear me if you can see me if everything is all right at your end let me know good 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 happy new year happy new year sister nancy it's good to have you back <laughs> we'll talk more when i meet you tomorrow <laughs> we bless god hallelujah so uh our topic for this today and it's going to go on possibly for a few months i don't know as the lord leads us great 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 the the topic for this year for the start obviously we will move into other ones <laughs> is um laying the right foundation for a successful marriage laying the right foundation for a successful marriage and that you can say choosing a life partner or but laying the right foundation for a successful marriage well it's not just the, about the choosing there are so many things that go into it to make the foundation strong laying the foundation for a successful marriage i am a pastor and i am a marriage counselor and I have blessed marriages and I've counseled people in their marriages, premarital counseling, uh, intramarital counseling. I've, I've done all of it. And one of the biggest things I see as a cause for many of the problems that many people have in their marriages is that they did not lay down the right foundation happy new year happy new year wonderful uh woman of god monica yeah good afternoon uh pastor araba god bless you 
hallelujah so one of the main reasons why many people have all sorts of problems in their marriages is that they did not lay down the right foundation they didn't lay down the right foundation sometimes people are desperate sometimes people are rushing sometimes people are being pressured into it sometimes people are deceived sometimes people are carnal sometimes people are not prayerful enough people are, do not listen to the voice of the lord and then they just get themselves into all sorts of things they call marriage and then for the rest of their lives they are harassed they are frustrated they are confused they are sad they don't know what to do because they did not lay down the right foundation the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what will the righteous do if the foundation is destroyed what will the righteous do so it doesn't matter how good you are as a person it doesn't matter how righteous you are if you go into a marriage where the foundation was not laid properly you will struggle in the marriage you struggle in the marriage and, and and a lot of people go into marriage with a false foundation with a wrong foundation all right so let's 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 try and, and and go into it now i've had people who even say right from the beginning marriage is not even necessary i i don't i'm not even going to marry because i have seen my parents marriages i've seen other people married and i i've seen how terrible their marriages are therefore i do not think that marriage is for me i do not think that i i, I can marry oh happy new year happy new year happy new year uh, brother prince right so people say that marriage is so hard marriage is too difficult uh, they cannot marry so they don't even want to go into marriage the, the thing is it's not because marriage is difficult of course marriage is difficult marriage is not for small boys and small girls marriage is difficult marriage is, is a lot of work however marriage is extremely important some people say that if you look at the price the cost of marriage that it's not worth it that is that is true that, uh, sorry that, that is not true marriage is worth it marriage is extremely important Everybody who can marry must marry because it's a very, very good thing, right? When you marry, you add value to your life. Everybody who marries, if you marry correctly, you add value to your life. You add value to your life. Everybody who marries and marries right gets promotion, does better in life. Many people are brought down by their marriages because they did not lay the right foundation. They didn't marry properly. If you don't marry properly, then it can be a curse. It can be a burden for the rest of your life. But if you marry properly, marriage is always good. Marriage is always good, right? So it has value to your life. In Proverbs 31.10, Proverbs 31 10. He says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. A virtu the price of a virtuous woman is far above rubies. That means that if you marry a virtuous woman, you are adding something to your life that is far above rubies. So you, you make exponential. A, a, a growth you 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 make exponential profit by marrying the problem is that if you don't marry a virtuous woman then the bible says that if you marry a nagging wife if you marry a difficult woman if you marry an evil woman that she becomes a cancer to your life so that, that one is dangerous that one is terrible okay so marriage is extremely important it is very good if you find a virtuous woman you are adding to your life value that is far above rubies if you marry a virtuous man most of the time we only put the blame on the woman a virtuous woman virtuous woman but if you marry a virtuous man and a man of integrity a man who knows what he is about as well then you also add so much value to your life so it goes both ways marriage is very important but look listen if you are able to marry 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 Be, uh, I, I cannot tell you enough. As we go in uh, further, you will understand. It is extremely important that you're able to marry, if you're able to marry. Unfortunately, or, or on the other hand, I do not want to put pressure on you as well to say that, listen, you must marry by fire, by force. Therefore, you, 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 you have under that pressure you rather make mistakes because that is also the problem because marriage is very good people put themselves under pressure that they must marry by all means and at all costs and then they end up making the mistake but marriage is very very good it's extremely good and i pray that everybody listening to me you will be blessed enough to have a good marriage but when you have a good marriage i tell you your life half of your life's problems are gone half of your life's benefits have come in proverbs 18 22 
Proverbs 18, 22. He says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. So when you marry, it is a good thing. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And receives favor obtains favor from god that means that you get even extra blessings added to your life just by finding a husband or finding a wife so when you find a wife when you find a husband when you are committed in a marital relationship god even gets closer to your life god answers your prayers better god releases extra blessings upon your life just for the sake of the marriage god releases extra blessings upon your life so it is a great thing to be married it is a great thing to marry it's a great thing to marry sometimes uh, 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 people easily put other people who are married down think, you know you, you, you are locking yourself into this bondage for life and people who are single and with all respect and uh, with all respect don't get me wrong some people who might be single for whatever reason sometimes for their own uh, uh, bad reasons and then when somebody else is going to marry then they try to discourage the person don't marry don't get into it don't commit into this marriage don't do it don't do it because they, you will come you will lock yourself up forever you, you will be struggling forever no not everybody who marries struggles forever hallelujah so don't let anybody discourage you because it is a good thing to get married it is a very good thing to get married and you get favor from the lord another reason why you must marry why marriage is so important and that i am praying that everybody can experience marriage and not just marry but a good marriage because look if you experience a bad marriage it's better if you have no even married but what i'm talking about is good marriage right another reason why it is good to have a good marriage to marry and that the marriage will be good is that god naturally did not design us to live alone God did not design us to live alone. We were not created to live alone. In sociology, we say that man is gregarious. You, 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 you always depend on somebody. We live in groups. We live in communities. We always depend on each other. Nobody was created. I salute you, woman of God. I won't make you up. Nobody was designed to live alone. You are not created to live alone. So if you come to Europe and in the Western world, for example, where a lot of people live alone, you can also see that the level of depression is very, very high. Many of these people are on antidepressant drugs. Many people are on all sorts of good afternoon, good afternoon, Brother Derek. Um, uh, 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 happy New Year to you. Right? Okay, so uh, 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 when, when you come to Europe, for example, as I'm saying, you see that a lot of people are single, a lot of people live alone, and because a lot of people live alone, too, there is a positive correlation between living alone and being depressed. Bless you, my brother, man of God, crazy church. Right? So, a lot of people are depressed in Europe, a lot of people are on drugs antidepressants on on alcohol on on recreational drugs party drugs whatever because loneliness is not good loneliness is not good and so that people are out there you can relate to people out there but when you come home you are just left alone that is not god's will god's will for humanity is not that we live alone at home and that you open your eyes and you are just there alone and you just talk to your walls and you just watch tv all day or read books all day and you are just there no that is not how god designed us to be god did not design he designed us to be to walk in groups and in partners and the highest point of the grouping or, or, or social living is marriage where two people confide in each other absolutely that my life is your life and your life is my life you watch my back i watch your back i know you intimately and you know me intimately intimately i am naked before you and i'm not ashamed you are naked before me and you are not ashamed everything about my life is exposed to you apart from god you are the next person who knows everything about me that is how god expects us to live because when we keep things in our heads too much it creates problems it creates diseases whether we are sad whether we are happy, whether we are frustrated, whether we are angry, God is always expecting us to have somebody we share with. The number one person to share all these things with is God, of course. That's why there is prayer. That's why there is prayer, so that we can pour our hearts out towards God. But also, God also provides human beings that we share life with, we do life with. So that we share all our passions, our desires, our anger, our frustrations, our joys. We share everything with these people that God creates for us. Okay, so marriage is extremely important. In Genesis two eighteen, in Genesis two eighteen, the, the Bible says that and the Lord God said, 
it is not good that the man should be alone it is not good that the man should be alone it is not good that the man should be alone no human being and when when we talk about man here even though here he's talking about the male right but women are also man as children of god right it is not good for a woman also to be alone and it is not good for a man to be alone it is not good for any of us to live alone it's not good i am not saying it is a curse i'm not saying that if you live alone then you are doomed that's not what i'm saying but it is better it is better if you could live with a partner and if i say partner i don't mean just meeting anybody from work and then they, they move in to live with you that is one of the problems we are having in our generation people begin to live together pretending they are married when they are actually not married there is a big difference between being properly married and pretending you are married when you pretend you are married right you can live together but you yourself you know that something is not right no matter how you fake it it is not the same as when you are properly married because when you properly marry right the spirit of god becomes part of it and it is not the same there is a difference good afternoon sister nicole hallelujah happy new year to you too right so it is not the same it is never the same cohabitation can never be compared to marriage when the proper uh, systems are, 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 are uh, gone through when uh, let's say whatever engagement procedure is done properly the wedding or the blessing is done properly and the hand of god comes into it it becomes a three a threefold thing god you and your husband or your wife it's a it's a threefold thing and that becomes very very different is this different from just a man and a woman deciding to just go and live together and then they pretend they are married that, that there's no peace there's no joy one thing about that is that you can just get up anytime you want and just walk away people will say but in marriage you can do the same it's it's not necessarily the same when you are married you can't just walk out you can walk out but you are still married <laughs> marriage doesn't just get broken you see even when you break it even when the court breaks it for you god does not append a signature to the divorce so it is still not divorced there are many people who believe they are divorced but before god they are still married that is why the bible says that when you put away your wife or your husband don't go and marry somebody else because before man you think you were alone but before god you are still married so if you marry somebody else you are committing adultery that's why god says that that when you marry you divorce your wife or your husband you don't go quickly to go and marry somebody else because before god you are still married so if you go and marry somebody else then you are now committing adultery it is not an easy thing marriage is completely different from cohabitation but in europe a lot of people are not getting married and so the level of depression and frustration is very very high people's lives are all over the place and 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 that is one sure uh, thing for you to know that god expects his children to get married and like i said in genesis 2 18 the lord said it is not good for man to be alone it is not good for the woman to be alone therefore i will make him help me it's not good for the man to be alone therefore i will make him help me i'll make him somebody who who matches who meets their life so that they can do life together with my brothers and sisters marriage is not just about sex many people just think that marriage is sex marriage is not such marriage is doing life together and life is not just about sex how how many times can you have sex and how long can you even have sex <laughs> for within a day okay so sex is just a, a minute fraction of life and you marry not for sex you marry for for that companionship that god has created in ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one. Two are better than one. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. When two people do things, it works faster, it works better. And they, they have that is why even in the circular world, we have something we call trade unions, where workers come together to have a collective voice so that they can bargain for better pay. It is like that. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. When you are alone, you can easily be deceived and pushed aside, right? Uh, and verse 10 says that for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow this is the reason why we marry we get better reward for our labor in this life 
when we say labor, it's not just going to work. But life, if you read Ecclesiastes, you show that life in itself is a labor. It's one long labor, right? And he says that when you do life with a partner, you have better reward for your labor. When you look back, when you've been married, I've been married. In next month, I'll be married for 16 years, right? Next month, I'll be married for 16 years. If I look at the progress I have made, the properties God has blessed me with, all the children God has given me, all the, 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 the progress I have made in my life, I couldn't have made that progress on my own on my own okay so my wife has been a great blessing to my life and i believe i have also been a blessing to her and together we are doing life everything we have achieved together belongs to her belong to me whereas if i had worked alone i might not have reached where i have reached now okay so he said that they have a better reward for their labor for if they fall one will lift up his fellow i remember days where my wife has come back from work and she's completely broken and i have just held her in my shoulders or in my, in my in my chest and I've just comforted and strengthened her and she's revived again just yesterday just yesterday you know we were up the night before uh, uh, don't ask me what were we doing we were praying we were up in the night before we prayed shared fellowship together and all that so we didn't go to bed early and she had to wake up early to go to work right and so when she came back she said she was tired she was broken she was feeling pain but i i just ignored all that i just i kept sending her a message that i missed that she should come back so when she came back i just had to i started playing with her throwing her around on the bed massaging her uh tickling her doing her brrr, i'll put my mouth on her stomach and then she would laugh and laugh and laugh we just played and played and by the time i finished she said oh thank you so much all my tiredness is gone now I believe I can go and, and, and even cook because I think that all my tiredness is gone. I'm, I'm happy. Thank you. You see, so we help each other. We support each other. Now, if she had come home and there was nobody there for her, or maybe she's even married, but the husband is not a correct husband, right? <laughs> I don't require. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I just did a brrr, I put my, my mouth on her stomach. Brrr, brrr, and she was just happy. Just tickling her, playing with her, right? And if she had had a husband who is not playful, who doesn't enjoy her company, that tiredness would still be on her shoulders. If she were not married, she would just come in and just carry on like that in her tiredness, okay? So he said that when one is down, the other will lift him up. There have been times I'm also down. Maybe ministry some church member behaves you know sometimes some, some of these church members you don't know what comes over them sometimes satan attacks some of them satan uses some of them and they behave in a crazy way just a few weeks ago i was supposed to go and uh, officiate uh, or help officiate a marriage or bless a marriage somewhere and after church there is this this can cross church member who every day she's creating one problem or the other and then she came with all sort of issues and 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 so i i i left church after i finished talking to her and all those things i came home and then i just came to refresh myself to continue on to go and and uh, help with the officiating of that marriage could you believe that i left my jacket i i wore my suit everything i left my suit jacket at home and i just drove to the place because my mind was what the, the stress from that church member the stress the, the continuous frustration from that church member you see to the extent i dressed up and i forgot the jacket i need to put on i just went it is when i got there i took up my outer coat i realized where is my jacket i didn't bring it I didn't bring it, you see. So, sometimes as a pastor, you go through a lot of frustration from church members, from all these difficulties. If you don't have a good wife, you'll be frustrated. Sometimes you hear that a pastor has gone to commit fornicating, uh, fornication, a pastor has gone to do drugs or alcohol. If you don't have a good wife as a pastor, many pastors, even though they are married, uh, they are living like they are single because they don't have a wife who understands. They don't have a wife who can comfort them, who can strengthen them, who can give them good counsel and good entertainment, good uh, chatting and good sex. They don't have this. And so when they don't have that, you can be frustrated you will be destroyed. So everybody and not only in pastoring, business people, executives, people who do all, everybody needs a good wife. Everybody needs a good husband.
because we cannot do life together i mean we cannot do life do life alone when you are down when you are frustrated your partner will be there to help you i cannot list the number of times where i have been unwell and my wife has been there to nurse me she cooks some nice light soup and she will bring it to me and she will, she will talk to me and it makes me feel good if I were alone, I couldn't in my sickness get up to go and cook that light soup. That is if I can even cook it well. You see, so we support each other. We help each other. When one falls down, the other will hold him up. That is one very good reason why we marry. He will lift his fellow up. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. When you are alone and you go through the issues of life, the tribulations of life, the chastisements of life, the difficulties of life, when you are alone, then you are just there. Then you may have to resort to alcohol or drugs or something. And this is why it is important that you marry. There are many people, and let me talk to you. There are some people out there, you are of married, ma ma is it mar marriage age or married, ma ma marriable age, right? But you are are refusing to marry some of you men you have reached the age where you can marry you are refusing to marry you are just hopping from girl to girl girl to girl just because you are getting free sex does not mean that you have arrived life is more than sex you some of you the young men who are out there just sleeping with girls one after the other promising them all sorts of things after the other instead of marrying look there are better blessings that god has for you if you could marry rather than just uh, 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 fly wandering around because sex is not marriage marriage is not sex you are you are just harming yourself and you are wasting your time and some of you women too you are out there uh, every man who comes to you no 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 i'm not ready i'm not ready you are not my type you are not good enough you are not tall enough you are not short enough you are not fat enough you are not thin enough you are not rich enough look you are frustrating your own destiny settle down and marry by that i i am not trying to say that just settle down with anything that comes in pants or anything that comes in, in trousers no don't don't but get ready to marry there are many of you who are going on with your lives and you have not even thought about marriage that i must marry you are just going on you are just going on you haven't thought that you have to marry look if you are past the age 18 you should actively be working towards marriage if you are past the age 18 you should actively be working towards marriage my wife was praying about her marriage from class four she tells me she said one of her bible teachers in class four taught her to pray and how to pray about her marriage and she started praying about her marriage from class four started working on it from class four her eyes were wide open so when she met me in sixth form no 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 she didn't just let me go once she met me in sixth form and and things were able to click that is it she just held on to because there's somebody who is serious and i was asking her recently she told me i didn't even have marriage in mind but you see somehow when you have ordered your steps in the way god wants it to be done you do things automatically unconsciously without even knowing she says she didn't even have marriage in mind but look every Everything she did presented her as a wife to me. Everything she did when I met her, everything she did, she did her commitment to the things of God, her obedience to me. Look, let me share something with you. Right. Before she, I, I told you that, I've said it before, let me just say it again. Before I went to sixth form, right, I was praying. I was in prayer. I've been praying for my, my, my youthful days. I was in fasting and prayer. When I heard God's voice, that I will meet my wife in sixth form. But the school I was supposed to go to was a boys' school. So I was I was surprised, but I still took it, right? When I got there, I didn't even know that they had a girls. I mean, there were girls in the sixth form. So these girls were there. Obviously, because of what I had heard, my eyes were down. I was looking around. However, she was the last person I could think of. There were more round ladies, more, excuse my language, women who, who looked more like it. You get it? More like it. And, and these ones looked, they, they looked good. And uh, my eyes were going in that direction. But when I saw her, I just heard God's voice, this is your wife. And I said, no, 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 no. God, you, 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 you must be joking. You can't be serious. She was very, very tiny. She was very, very tiny. She was short. She had these big spectacles like a research fellow. She had a nice haircut. I mean, she was always smartly dressed. And she was, she was just too intelligent to be my wife. Because in the class, she would answer every question. Speech prize giving day, she would take all the prizes. And I said, I mean, I can't marry this one. 
and her mouth ta, 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 she was everywhere ta, 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 answering everything going everywhere laughing and playing everywhere i said no 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 i cannot marry this one but let me let me show you some of the things that drew her to me even though god had told me i was trying to reject it right now i was closer to some other girls at least there were two other girls i was very close with she was elsewhere but i as a chapel prefect I had an office and I was sometimes just sharing the word of God with some of the my, my, my mates, six form mates, right? Many of them, even the girl who was closer to me, didn't show any interest in the word of God. And we would just sit down there anytime we had free prayer, then we'll just be sharing the word. This girl who was closer to me didn't even value the word. It's like, I mean, she wasn't serious. When you are preaching, she's just looking at her fingers, breaking her knuckles and doing all those things. She wasn't interested. But this girl, who is now my wife, came around and she would ask questions. She would be interested. Sometimes, even if I haven't done it, she would ask, when are we doing the next one? When are we going to have a, another Bible study? And she would, she would actively participate. She would actively participate. Participate. Let, let, let me read this in. Uh, I won't request this. Something. The thing is, some man can't even hear what. Go okay, yeah, that is very, very true. So I will go into all those details as we go on. Right? She will actively participate. She will ask questions. She will do all these things in the scripture union. I was the SU president. She was she, uh, SU vice president. She was she was uh, SU secretary. And she was so active, she, very committed, doing everything she needed to do. Right? All these things were drawing her to me she she, she was endearing uh, be, uh, she was endearing herself to me and we will go into the detail as we go on for you to know also that because you must also have your 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 your, your vision in life because the person you marry is connected to the vision okay the person you marry is connected to the vision if the person doesn't fit into your mission you will you would just be frustrating your life but i will come into all those details later but she endeared herself to me the way she was committed to the things of god and she was kind as well very very kind i mean the girls didn't stay on campus the girls were from home and this girl sometimes would bring me food from home she would cook nice food and bring me not because of you we were not in a relationship there was nothing between us she would cook food and bring me let me tell you one thing that broke the camel's back i went to play football and i injured my toe right and uh i kept playing around with it thinking oh it will go it will go it will heal it will heal it wasn't healing and the thing was becoming a big complex and she kept asking me take it to hospital take it to hospital. oh no 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 it's, it will heal it will heal it you know when we were young we were hot-headed faith faith brothers hot-headed it will heal it will heal one day i was on campus when i got a message that a lady is looking for me it was around 5 a.m around 5 8, 5 30 a.m at dawn so they came to call me that somebody's looking for me when i went this lady had parked her car out there it was my wife's mother. My wife's mother, she didn't even know me then. She had driven, she, she was on her way to work. She had driven from wherever she was supposed to go, come to our school, called for me to say that her daughter says I am injured and I am not taking the thing to hospital. And it's a very dangerous thing. She has come to school at dawn to warn me that this morning, immediately the hospital's open, I should be there. I should go to hospital and get treated. You see, somebody who cares, somebody who, 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 who is committed to you and to your life, who cares about everything that happens to you. We were just friends. We were just, so all these things drew me, drew me, drew me, drew me closer to her to an extent that it got to a point. I mean, I didn't actually properly, formally propose to her. When I, 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 I proposed to her initially. She told me oh, she's too young. She, 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 she's not thinking about those things. She, she, she's not doing that. I should, I should keep quiet. So I kept quiet. I didn't propose to her again until we got married. <laughs> we just, but the friendship was strong. The friendship was good. This is somebody who had organized her life in such a way that she had automatically become a marriage material. Somebody that when you lay your hand on, you cannot just let her go. She may not be big she may not be tall she may not have super big breasts she may not have super big buttocks she may not have all the funny things many men are looking for but this is somebody who has been a pillar and for all the years that i've been married to her life has just been one long party you see so you will have to make your you have to prepare and organize yourself to marry don't just live your life thinking marriage will just happen it doesn't just happen just as becoming a doctor does not just happen 
for all the people who are doctors today they didn't just end up becoming doctors they planned from early from from their youthful days that i will become a doctor and they started learning in that direction they took science and maths more seriously they they, they, they took science courses progress physics chemistry biology at least in all level and then through a level physics chemistry biology and they chose medical uh, courses or chose to go to the medical school and then they ended up becoming doctors you don't become a doctor by just waking up one morning in the same way you don't get married by just waking up one morning if you don't organize yourself as a man or a woman who will marry and who will marry properly you will never get married you intend to get married you plan yourself to get married you organize yourself to get married you live your life like you want to get married you cannot go around messing everywhere playing everywhere and expect that one day you just get married many people live so carelessly and then it gets to a point where they realize that their time is passing them by and then they begin to get desperate hey then they are in one prayer house after the other harassing god no wisdom is extremely important wisdom is extremely important we don't marry just by prayer of course we marry by prayer i will i will go into that as we go on but we marry primarily by the wisdom of god by the wisdom of god okay so he says that uh, 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 in Ecclesiastes 4 Verse, verse 10. When one falls, the other will, will, will lift him up. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he that had not another, for he had not another to help him up. So we marry so that we can get help from each other. Everybody needs help. Don't think that you can do life on your own. The God who created you has said you cannot do it on your own. The God who created you has said that you, you must not do it alone. He said it is not good for you to do it on your own. Of course, you can do it on your own if you want. But the God who created you has said it is not good for you to do it on your own. You see, when somebody manufactures a car, he writes a manual and he says that, let's say, the tire pressure. They tell you that it is not good for the tire pressure to go below, the tire pressure to go below, let's say, 45 PSI. Okay, the front tire should not go below 45 PSI. The back tire should not go below 48 PSI. It is not good for you to go below that. You can choose to use your tire pressure at 20 PSI. That is your problem. The car will still drive, but you will not get the optimal results. And you can easily find yourself in an accident. Your tire will wear out a lot quicker. God bless you, lovely uh, woman of God, lovely Emma. Okay, right. So it is important that you... Try to live your life according to the manual of the manufacturer. And the manufacturer says that you can live alone, but it is not good for you to do so. So organize your life with the intention of getting married. Humble yourself and know that you will need a man. Know that you will need a woman. Some of you are too spiritual. When we were in SU, there were some people like that. Me, I'll never marry. I'll never marry. They were calling some of us carnal. I remember in Scripture Union in Accra Academy, some of our colleagues actually called us. A, to a meeting, SU meeting, because we are SU executives and we were close. We used to work together. The accusation was that we worked together to lunch together. We went to eat. This girl was not even sleeping on campus. I was staying on campus. I didn't have anything to do with her. But just the fact that we worked together from lesson to, to the uh, dinner hall to eat lunch together and come back to lessons we were we were committing fornication they have seen us holding hands and so we were sinning we were sinning we, they called us to a meeting that we should change trains we should we should break up we should avoid each other when we got married they all came to our wedding dancing like 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 hot heads you see sometimes it is wisdom do not make yourself overly spiritual over spirituality i'll never marry me i'll never marry look your mouth is a prophetic tool as you keep declaring you will never marry you will never marry it shall be so it is a prayer you are praying that you don't know so say that you will marry work towards it plan your life towards it live like you will marry organize yourself like you will marry because marriage is good marriage is an awesome blessing the fact that you see somebody's marriage struggling somebody's marriage failing does not mean that is how god intended it to, to happen cars get involved in accident and yet you wish to buy a car if you haven't bought one already why haven't you said you will never sit in a car you never buy a car because you've seen an accident before most of the people who die die in hospitals but when you are sick you go to hospital 
Why? Because you still will get your healing. The fact that people die in the hospital doesn't mean that you will not get your healing. Okay, so the fact that marriages struggle, the fact that some people's marriages fail, does not mean yours will fail. Organize yourself to marry. Don't make yourself super spiritual. Some of you as your sisters, they come to you, no, 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 me. You are kind of, you are kind of, you are kind of. You don't know that that is your hour of visitation. One day Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He said that if only they had known the hour of their visitation, they would not go through what they, they were about to go through. Jerusalem missed the time of their visitation and went through total devastation. But they are still struggling to reorganize you understand so sometimes your hour of visitation will come early sometimes to come late sometimes you the, the, the person who will marry you will come close my i go close to my wife at six form we were young we were teenagers we were teenagers and we got we, we got close she of course she told me she wasn't interested but everything she did showed that she was interested and we i didn't propose again we just went on went on went on before i realized we were setting a date because we were just close Organize your life with the intention of getting married. Marriage will not drop from a tree. It will not happen automatically. Organize yourself. Plan, think, dress, talk, behave like somebody who wants to get married. Be humble in your heart. Know that you will need to get married. Many people are so proud when they are young and they are beautiful. Their breasts are standing strong. Everything is so nice. And they keep tossing man after man after man. And then before I realize, everything starts pointing downwards. Then it's now that they are praying. And now they, are, they, they reduce the price. Buy one, get one free. They now go buy one, get one free. Or everything must go. <laughs> everything must go. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I hear there was a man who would not allow people to uh, uh, marry any of his daughters. He had like four beautiful daughters. And he would not allow anybody to get close. And so he put a big sign in front of his house. Beware of the wild dogs. And so all, all the men were not able to come. And then the women all finished university. They finished their masters. They finished their doctorate. Nobody was coming. Before he realized, the man had changed the sign that we sell ice water here. <laughs> he had removed the beware of the dogs and he has put that we sell ice water so that people can come into the house. If they are coming to buy ice water, at least they will meet the girls. Okay? Do not, do not let your time of visitation pass you by, especially you, the ladies. Do not let your time of visitation pass you by. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. The man, look, I can show you photos of how I looked like in sex form. I didn't look like the way I look now. The man that God will bring your way at that early age is not going to look all that made up. Sometimes you have you have an erroneous impression. All the men that you see are very successful. Eh? Somebody worked on them. Me, as you see me here, sitting in my study, looks like life is good. Eh? Somebody has worked on me behind the scenes for the past 16 years. And that is my wife. So if you meet me right now, you think that that is the kind of man I want to marry right i didn't look like this when she married me i didn't have the pot belly i was skinny i was out I, I i was nothing i had nothing i lived in a single room when she married me i lived in a single room she left her father's beautiful house to come and live with me in london in a single room and she has blessed me and helped me to go up until now god has given us what he has given us do you understand so Humble yourself. It is humility. Don't overestimate yourself. You are only a human being. Dear lady, you are only a human being. You have your limitations. Don't overestimate yourself. Humble yourself. When people come, of course, it doesn't mean sell yourself so cheap. Anything that comes to saying that. No, 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 no. But humble yourself, but be wise. Be wise. See a man who has a vision. See a man who has a vision. We'll go into all the details. You'll be amazed the things we need to know. Okay. So it is important. Verse 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. Especially if you are listening to me from Europe and the US. US is very, very cold now. If two lie together, then they have heat. You keep each other warm. You keep each other warm. Okay. Two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? How can one be warm alone? Okay, so we keep each other warm and it's not just lying together that we keep each other warm, right? It's not just lying together. Do you know, let me tell you something. Do you know that even if you have heard of incubus or succubus, some of this heavy thing that comes upon you when you sleep, eh? Sometimes when there are demonic forces around, when you are not praying enough, it can happen to you. you or when you are in any form of demonic uh, uh, bondage or oppression. 
Do you know that it is said that when that thing comes upon you and you are lying in bed with somebody else, when the person touches you, the thing will go. When, when the person touches you, the thing will go. But if you are alone, nothing will touch you. You will just be there until the thing suppresses you. If you don't know how to pray yourself out, then you are out. It, it can kill you. People who drink alcohol and they go to bed and they die through their, their sleep, most of the time because they are sleeping alone, right? He said that when two lie together, they keep warm. They keep warm. Look, the joy of being able to lift your hand and put it on another person. The joy of lifting your leg and putting it on another person. You have no idea how it feels. It's a great blessing. It is a great blessing. So marriage is a good thing. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily or quickly broken. You see, sometimes some attacks will come. Attacks will come. You cannot pray on your own. I'm a pastor. Sometimes I can come under some attacks and you, you just don't know what to do. And you see, my wife will stand behind the scenes. Kabayando, Nebrasto, Kapa, Yagagaga, Sosa. She will intervene, intercede, and intercede until I am out of whatever it is, right? And I do it for her also. Sometimes some things will come your way that you cannot withstand on your own. But when you are married and you have the right kind of husband, you have the right kind of wife, they stand with you, they pray for you, they intercede for you, they hold your hand to come out. He said that a threefold cord is not easily broken. When we do it and we do it right and we allow God to play his rightful place in that marriage, that marriage will not easily get broken. It will stand and it will endure. So do not look at difficult marriages do not look at challenged marriages and conclude that it is not good to marry or marriage is not worth it marriage is out of fashion marriage is now even coming into fashion if marriage were no good why would homosexuals fight that they also be given the same uh, uh, respect if marriage was not a good thing you see look the world is a funny place the same atheist and godless people sinners they trample upon marriage. Don't marry. Marriage is useless. Marriage is, 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 is out of date. It's out of shape. It's not necessary. It's nothing. Look at how Satan works. Marriage is rubbish. Marriage is this. They produce lawyers who are quick to, to process divorce. Divorce quickly. Divorce 101. Divorce online. Divorce. Express divorce. Drive through divorce. Everything. And yet the same people behind the scene who have created homosexuals are now fighting that homosexuals should also be given the same uh, uh, respect as marriage. If marriage was not good, they will not be fighting for it. Don't allow anybody don't allow anybody to discourage you about marriage. If marriage were not good, wealthy people, carnal people, sinners will not be fighting for it. It is a great thing to be married. Married. It is a wonderful thing to be married. It's a great, great blessing to be married. Therefore, fight to be married. If you are married, fight to stay in your marriage. If you are not married yet, fight to get married. And I pray for you that the Lord will make a way for you that you will be able to marry. Nothing is impossible with God. Marriage is possible. A good marriage is possible possible okay another reason why it is important that we get married is that marriage is the only god ordained channel for procreation of course you can say that uh, 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 you can say that yes yeah, i mean all you need to do is to just have sex and you 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 will get pregnant oh yes you can have sex and get pregnant you can even go and do artificial insemination and get pregnant but that does not mean that is God's ordained way to get pregnant. God's only ordained path for getting pregnant is through marriage. And that is why we must marry. God's ordained path for procreation is marriage. In Malachi 2.15, Malachi chapter 2 verse 15, he says, And did not God make them one? Did he not make one? Make man and a woman one? Okay. Yet, had he the residue of the spirit. That is where he releases the spirit. And why is he made what why is he making them one? Where for one? That he might seek a godly seed. That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take it to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. So marriage, God ordained marriage for the creation of godly seed. Please, don't get me wrong. I am not here to put anybody down. I'm not here to judge anybody. But let me tell you, God's word is God's word. God's prescription is God's prescription. God is saying that he desires that godly seed be created through marriage. Full stop. Does that mean that if somebody is born outside of wedlock, God doesn't love them? God loves them. 
like I told you, BMW will not disown a car that is driving. Let's say when you bring your car into England and you are driving on the on the right side instead of the left side, BMW cannot say it's no longer a BMW. It's still a BMW, but it is not being driven the right way. It is not being used the right way. BMW will tell you that the tire pressure should be 45 psi. If you choose to use tire pressure of 25 psi, BMW cannot disown the car, but it is not their intended way of using the car. Okay? When they say that this car is diesel and you choose to put petrol in it, it is still a BMW, it's still a Mercedes Benz, but you are spoiling it. Okay, so children who are born out of wedlock are still God's children. God still love them. But God's desired plan is that every child is born out of wedlock. God has a special heart, a special desire that children are born within wedlock. Sorry, within marriage. That is God's plan. That children are born within marriage. And he says that he, he, he wants to get a godly seed through marriage. He wants to get a godly seed through marriage. Therefore, everybody should take heed. Make sure that you, you have a wife of your youth. So he's saying that make sure you marry early and not just marrying early. Make sure that you deal well with your wife as well. Treat your wife well. Treat your husband well so that you the marriage can stand. And when the marriage stands, you can have godly seed. And the godly seed are brought up in a home where both a father and a mother are functional. Not just a, a single parent home. And, and please, I don't I'm not judging anybody. If you are raising children in, in a single parent home, I'm not judging you. I pray for God's grace. Many women are raising their children on their own because of wicked men. I know that. I know that if men had been responsible, if men had been godly, if men had taken up their rightful place, there will be very, very few single women. But we live in a generation where men are careless, men are useless, men are irresponsible. And so many women are left with, with, with uh, uh, to raise their children alone. So don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong at all. I am not judging anybody who is raising a child on their own. Okay, I'm not judging anybody, but I'm, I, I still have to speak the truth, what the word of God is saying. Oh my God, our generation has come to a point where even when you preach the word of God, you have to apologize, you have to beg, because you may offend somebody's feeling. Somebody who is, who is a single mother may get angry with you, that you are judging them and, and go ranting all over the place. So please, understand me, that is not what I am saying. That is not what I am saying at all. Somebody say, Michael will be there by saying that, and also because of wicked women. Look, uh, I, I, maybe you have not listened to some of my previous uh, uh, messages. Yes, women can also be wicked. Human nature, everybody can be wicked. Black men can be wicked. White men can be wicked. Indians can be wicked. Uh, Pakistanis can be wicked. Men can be wicked. Women can be wicked. Everybody is is susceptible to wickedness, okay? But when it comes to men and women going together, the man is supposed to be a leader and must be a good leader and a true leader. One of the reasons why marriages are not working and we have too many single homes is because men lack leadership. And in their, in their lack of leadership, they think that the women are wicked. If you treat a woman well, of course, once in a while you meet a very wicked woman. Don't get me wrong. But once most of the time, we have this failure because... Because uh, uh, men are not playing their role as they are supposed to play. We will get into it and you will, you will know. Or you can go back and listen to some of my old, the role of men in making good marriage. You'll be amazed what, what, what it is about. Okay. All right. So that is another very important reason why we must get read, uh, married. Why it's very important to get married is that it has health and psychological benefits. Like I mentioned earlier, you cannot be alone. God did not design us to be alone. If you stay alone for too long, you start becoming problematic. You start quarreling with everybody. You start arguing with everybody. You can get depressed. You can get you can overeat and get so fat because you are you are lonely. You just spend your time overeating or oversleeping or over drinking or over over doing whatever and it can disturb you. But when we live together, we serve as a check on each other and we warm each other up as well. In Proverbs 13:12 Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12. It says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Because we are designed to always interact, to always have fellowship. When you are just alone, you are always looking for when, 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 when. And, and please, if you would be honest with me, let's say if you are alone, if you are somebody who lives alone, right? If you are single, you will attest to this, what I'm saying. You are naturally always looking at when, 
When am I going to get somebody to talk to me? When is somebody going to call me? M many people who live alone talk that they do a lot of phone calls and they just call and call and call and they talk and talk. They stay on the phone for so long, gossiping, gossiping. I'm not saying everybody, please. There are always exceptions, okay? Like, gossip, 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 talk, talk, talk. So these people are so cantankerous. Everywhere they go, they are starting a fight, arranging a fight, to complain about something, complain. About Most people I know who are very careful, some are single. Most people I know who are very careful, some are single. Because it is frustrating. It, 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 it brings mental mental instability and man, mental uh, 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 problems, okay? So it is good. He said that the hope deferred make it the heart sick. Hope deferred make it the heart sick. But when desire come it, it is a tree of life. When you get a person, you have somebody to talk to. You, you are, most of the time when I'm driving around town, I'm following somebody who is driving so slowly. One way I used to laugh, I, 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 I laugh at the person is that this person might, might either, either she, he or she is living alone, doesn't want to get home early, or at least with a bad husband or a bad wife, doesn't want to get home early. Okay, when my wife told me yesterday, she said that I, I look forward to coming home to meet you. I look forward to coming home to meet you. And it's the same with me. When I go anywhere, most of the time I want her to be with me. But when she is not with me, I am eager to get back. I am rushing. You see me speeding like there's something chasing me. Nothing is chasing me. I want to get back to my wife. Okay, that is because he said that hope deferred make it the heart sick. It has emotional and, 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 and psychological problems when the hope is deferred, when you are left, left alone and you are just looking through your window, looking through your window, and then you start getting all sorts of wicked ideas. It is not right. So there are very, very good reasons why we must marry. But one thing I also want to sound a warning about, I want you also to know is that even though it is God's will that everybody should marry, let us be realistic. Not everybody will get married. Hey, what is this man trying to say today? It is the truth. Not everybody will get married. Not everybody will get married. Yes, woman of God, Aram Alpha. It's true. Half of your blessings come when you get married. It's true. So, but like I said, it is not everybody who will get married. Not everybody will get married. And let's look at the people who will not get married. Of course, number one, those who don't want to get married. If you don't want to get married, there's nothing anybody can do to you. Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, again. No, no, no. Let me, let me rephrase what I was trying to say. That it is God's will for everybody to get married. God wants everybody to get married. So if you want to get married, I want you to know that God wants you to get married, right? In Genesis 2.18, I think I mixed it. I mixed it up. So God wants you to get married. Genesis 2.18, God said it is no good for the man to be alone. Therefore, I'll make him a helpmate for him. So God wants you to get married. If you want to get married, you are in good company. God wants the same thing for you. So start preparing yourself to get married. If you want to get married, you are in good company. God wants the same thing for you. In Proverbs 18.22, it says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing. And obtain a favor from the Lord. So God says it is good to get married. And you get favor. You get blessings. You get breakthroughs. So God wants you to get married. But now what I was trying to say is that. It is not compulsory that everybody should get married. It's not compulsory. Even though God wants you to get married. Like I said. BMW wants you to drive your car at 45 PSI. As a tight pressure. But it is not compulsory. It is recommended. It's not compulsory. If you choose to drive your car with your tires deflated, BMW will not come and arrest you. It is your choice. It is your choice. It is still a BMW. It is your choice. So in the same way, it is not compulsory. Don't think that if you have chosen not to get married, then you are cursed. You are not cursed. Because sometimes we also have this extreme thing on the, on the other side where people say you are cursed. You are not married. You are under a curse. You are under a curse. It's a lie. Not everybody who is not married is under a curse. Some people are not married by choice. Some people are not married by plan, by program. Some people are not married by nature. Hi, let's go to Matthew 19. Matthew 19, 10 to 12. Matthew chapter 19, verse 10 to 12. He says that his disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. The disciples were saying that we should be free to divorce anytime we want. 
And Jesus said, no, 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 you can't do that. So when he explained to them that you cannot just divorce, if you divorce, you cannot even marry, you must still stay single. They said, if that is the case, there is no good for us to marry at all. Why should I marry and put myself into this difficult thing? And then Jesus said to them, let's see what Jesus said. And he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. Not all men can receive it. Not all men can marry. Not all men can stay in marriage. Not everybody can marry. Not everybody will marry. Let's get it right. Not everybody will marry. If you don't want to marry, don't let anybody give you pressure. If you don't like marriage, don't let anybody give you pressure. Stay in your lane. Enjoy your life. But don't go harassing people who are getting married. Okay? Paul was not married. He was okay. Peter was married. He was okay. God used them all. Marriage is not the all in all. It is a great thing. It's a great blessing. But it's not the all in all. Sometimes you see people bullying others because they are not married. Don't use your marriage to bully people. Don't use your marriage to look down on other people as if that they are second class human beings because they are not married. Don't. Because not everybody will marry. Okay? Not everybody will marry. Now, let's 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 go on. Verse 12. For there are some tw verse, verse 12 of Matthew Matthew 19, right? For there are some eunuchs. There are some who were born eunuchs. So you, you know who an Enoch is? Somebody who is not sexually active. He's not sexually inactive. Now, if you are not sexually active, what are you going to do in marriage? Of course. Pastor, are you not the same person who said that marriage is not all about sex? Yes, marriage is not all about sex. But sex is also an important part of marriage. Those of you who are married and for the past, whatever, three days or so, you haven't done anything. Some say, hey, three days. Pay. Some of you have not done anything one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month. Repent. Go and have sex with your husbands and wives at once. Some of you, your husbands will struggle and struggle before they get one, 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 uh, one hit. It's not good. You must have sex regularly, regularly, regularly. A lot of it, okay? Because sex is an important part of marriage. Sex is an important part of marriage. But it's not the all in all. Okay, he said that some are eunuchs. They are not sexually active. They are not sexually. There are some women. They they never feel anything for sex. They don't. They don't want to think about it. They don't want sex. If you marry, if you are such a woman like that and you marry, you are going to harass somebody's son. It will be one problem after the other. There are some men too. They don't have any desire for sex. It's not like their 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 male organ is not working. It is working, but. Sex is, is nothing to them. They don't like it. They don't want it. They don't have any feelings. If they don't have any feelings, stay in your lane. Okay. So there are some who are eunuchs, which were born from their mother's womb. They were born like that genetically. Some people are like that. They just can't marry. They just, they don't have anything. <laughs> they, they don't feel anything. You tickle them nothing. You hold them nothing. You kiss them nothing. You tell them anything nothing. They are just there. So let them be. Don't look down upon them. They are also God's creation. Love them. Respect them. Respect their choice. Support them. Don't give them any unnecessary pressure. Right? And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Some people too have been forced to become asexual or sexually inactive for various reasons but sometimes uh, some of these people they, they, they get either castrated or uh, they've been involved in an accident that has made them sexually inactive sometimes they are sick from something that has made them sexually inactive there are some who have been forced especially in the bible times the kings and things they had men who used to bath the women right and you know can you imagine if you are bathing the king's wife and uh uh, you, you, you are sexually active. I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's not correct. It's not correct. It's not correct. So these people were literally castrated so that they have no feelings. The king, you know, the king used to marry the most beautiful woman. And the most beautiful woman will strip herself naked and the you know will be bathing and washing her, put putting oil and everything on her, and she feels nothing. Hey, if you put me in such a situation, you have killed me. That's why I married early. Okay. But for some people, it is not a problem. They, they have been made like that for the particular work they ought to do, they want to do, okay? Some have been made like that also for the sake of the work of God. He said that, uh, 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 which 
He said, and there are there are eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. People like Paul. Paul was somebody who is very likely was sexually active, right? But but he chose for the sake of the kingdom. For the, he, that man was so zealous for the sake of the kingdom. He said, I will not marry. So I can focus on the work of God. When we were in school, some of our mates said, Pauline, we are, we are in the Pauline ministry. We, we will never marry. We are in the Pauline ministry. We will never marry. Go and look at them. They are all married. They are all married. Because they think it's a joke. It is not a joke. It is not a joke at all. So some for the sake of the kingdom, you look at some of these... Uh, Catholic priests and, 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 and others, even in the charismatic realm. I know some pastors, somebody like Noel Jones. He got married and then the, I think the marriage broke down. And he decided not to marry again and he's there. He's doing his ministry. He's fine. Somebody like Mike Murdoch, but, uh, Dr. Mike Murdoch. He's not married. He also got married early. The marriage did not last. When the marriage broke down, he stayed. He's, he has worked for God for decades alone. He has everything, but he's happy not being married. So some people like not being married. I cannot, the fact that I am married, I can't go and look down on Mike Murdoch. Hey, who am I? He's a big, big man in the kingdom, okay? So do not, do not, do not put anybody down just because they are not married. Some people will not marry. Not everybody will marry. Some people will not marry. Now, I think I have a question here. Let me read it quickly and then we'll see how it goes. From from a uh, uh, woman of God, Irama uh, Alpha. He says, Osama, please, how would we know then if the man we are marrying is an eunuch and he himself doesn't know, considering we are to wait till we marry before sex? Of course, I will come into even the, the marriage before sex uh, 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 thing because that is another big problem we have. How will you know if the person is an eunuch? That is what I am saying that marriage should be between the two people both of you should have the desire that you want to marry if there is no desire don't force it if there is no desire don't force it now how can you say you are asked for that uh, if somebody does not like sex even if somebody does not like sex and they want to marry you they can pretend they like sex they can do all sorts of crazy things with you before marriage so that you know it works and then immediately they marry you they switch off there are countless stories like that. People were, before they got married, they were all over, having all sorts of wild things. Immediately they got married, everything is switched off. So that one is there. So you cannot use the person's behavior before marriage to determine whether they are eunuchs or not. You being, <laughs> I was going to say eunuchism, being, being an eunuch, mm, it's a personal thing. You know yourself whether you are an eunuch or not. You, you know yourself whether you are sexually active or not. You know yourself whether you can be a husband or a wife or not. And you have, you have to be true to yourself. And sometimes, some of these people really know that they, they have to, their marriage is not their business. But we, society forces them into it. You see, the mother will come crying. Hey, I've taken you to school. I need my grandchildren. You are old enough. When are you getting married? When are you getting married? They give pressure, 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 and then this brother will go and find some woman and marry her and frustrate her life forever because she, he didn't want to get married. But he had to marry for his mother. So anybody who wants to marry you, please make sure that you ask them properly. Whether they are eunuchs or not, whether they just want to come and frustrate you or they actually want proper marriage, okay? So you make sure that you are not married and eunuch. And if you are an eunuch, don't let anybody give you pressure. Some women are eunuchs too. Some women are eunuchs. They don't feel anything, nothing. Allow them to be. Allow them to be. Not everybody must get married. Not everybody will get married. And let me even add this. There are some people who are not eunuchs who may not get married. There are some people who are not, you know, who may not get married. Because getting married is a very complex thing. Look, if you are listening to me and you are married, eh, thank God that you are married. The fact that you are beautiful doesn't mean you get married. The fact that you have all men chasing you doesn't even mean you get married. It is God. Only God gives marriage. Only God helps you. It, it is by the grace of God that we get married. It is just by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. So be grateful that you are married. Appreciate your husband. Appreciate your wife. And then handle them well. Because it is strictly by the grace of God. Some people, they are not you know, but they will not get married. Because they are not meeting the right person. Or some, some will say that 
they are not lucky. I don't believe in luck. I believe in the grace of God. But then also some people will not get married because of demonic activity. Let's not forget that. Some people have spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. Let's not forget that. Don't think that because we talk wisdom, we don't talk spirit. We talk spirit too. Some people have spirit husbands and spirit wives who will never allow them to get married unless they go through deliverance or they, they themselves pray some serious prayers and break some things. Some people, I'm not saying everybody who doesn't get married is because they have a spirit husband or a spirit wife. Don't get me wrong. But some people, it will not go except by prayer and fasting. Some people can only marry by serious prayer and fasting. Some people... It is a pattern in their family. There might be some ancestral curse. Of course, the Bible says if anybody is in Christ, it's a new creation. The old is past. When we come into Christ, some things are broken. But look, some patterns need to be reversed. You have to actively work on some things. Otherwise, you can be stuck in those things. At the same time, I don't want you to over fill your mind that everything that goes wrong is because of a spirit husband, spirit wife. But those things are real too. So let's balance things. Some, if you see that your marriage is delaying, you want to marry, but the thing is delaying too much, fast and pray. Pray. I mean pray. Serious prayer. I don't mean joke, joke prayer. Serious prayer. And let God bring a turn around. Let God... I, I have seen it happen where things like that delay. And people prayed. Sometimes either by deliverance or personal prayer. And there was a turn around. So don't let... Don't, 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 don't ignore that one also. If you are having any such problem, pray. Pray. It will be a big blessing to yourself if you learn to pray. Okay. Right. The man also, another thing I want us to know today, maybe uh, 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 before I, we'll see, we'll see how far we can go. The man is usually the one who must find a woman. God bless you, apostle. God bless you so much, man of God. More grace to you, sir. Right. It is the man who must naturally find a woman. That is God's ordained principle. But one of my uh, our uh, senior pastors was even asking yesterday that if a woman is in some form of a friendship with a man, and you can see that these people can become a couple, they can become a couple, but the man is not saying anything. Some men don't know how to talk. Some men, their mouths are just dead. He is doing everything like he wants to marry you, but he's afraid to say it because he's afraid if he says it and you say no. It's manhood is gone forever. If that is the case, as a woman, can you propose to him? And the answer he gave was so good. You don't just propose. A woman, that's not how it is done. A woman, you can't just go and stand in front of a man and say, I want to marry you or marry me. But there are, there's a way you can go about it. You can clearly say it like, uh, 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 I've seen that we've, we've been friends for all this while. Do you have any interest? Do you have any plans? I, I, I think it will not be bad if we get married. But I leave that to you. You are the man. If you think you love you, you want to marry me, let's go. If you don't want, let's let's we can continue to be friends. It's not a problem. But I don't want to be wasting your time. Maybe you are afraid that if you ask me to marry you, I will say no. But I, let me tell you that I will not say no. I will say yes. But if you don't want to say it, don't worry. Maybe you are not the man for me. Then you close it. Okay, when you say it that way and it is the man's intention, then he will he will go ahead. Now, some men are light-headed that when a woman does this, then they think that the woman is cheap, the woman has fallen for them. It is never so. She is only trying to help you, and not only trying to help you, help herself also. Because some of you men, you hang around the man, uh, sorry, you hang around the woman, you will not propose. You will not take anything and you are hanging around and dancing around like Israel, like going through the wilderness. 40 years going around the same mountain. Round and round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. You are going around this woman and you are blocking other people from coming in. The way you are close to this woman, there are suitable men out there who want to come and marry her, but they have already concluded that you are in a relationship with her and you are hanging around this woman. You are not proposing. You are wasting her time. Please, dear young lady, if there is any man hanging around you and he is not proposing, let me tell you, he is blocking the sun from shining on you. He is blocking the husband from coming. Ask him if he has any intentions of marrying. If he does not have any intention, then you know how to limit his visitations so that the right person can come. 
the right person can come. Many men have wasted many women's time. There are many women who are frustrated now because of a time waster. Some of these men, they cannot talk. They just hang around you. Hang around you. You cook for them, they come and eat. They need money, they come and get from you. Everything they come to get from you. They are always with you. Sitting with you. Hanging with you. Going to church with you. Sitting next to you at church. Yet they will not say anything. And then you are there. After five years, six years of friendship, all you hear is that uh, they are sharing invitation cards. He's marrying somebody else completely away from you. Don't allow any man to waste your time like that. Don't. Be bold. Ask them. If they want to marry you, let's, let's get things going. If they don't want to marry you, show them the door so that the right person can come. It is simple. It is simple. Okay? So, naturally, it is the man who must take the step. It is the man who must take the step. The saddest even part, Pastor Sally is laughing. The saddest part is that some, some of these men will even sleep with you. And we will come into that. Look. Don't allow any man to tell you he will never buy a car he hasn't done a test driving with. Eh? And so if he cannot sleep with you to know how you taste, eh? then he cannot marry you. That man, his head is light. He's not even a marriage material to start with. And I'm not, you must not allow him to sleep with you. If he's giving an excuse like, oh, when I'm with you, maybe, I mean, my desire for you is so strong, I can't control myself. I want you so much. That one is a different story. But for a man to say, until I sleep with you, I will not marry you because I have to know the goods I am buying. That man, his head is light. Like paper. Such a person, even if you marry her, you will have, you, if you marry him, you will you have problem because he's immature. He's, he's not deep. Human beings are not products we buy from the shelves of grocery stores. A human being is not a car. A car is made up of a car. Or just the components. A human being is made up of a spirit, soul, and body. Everything we do connects to our spirits and our souls. Everything we do with our bodies connects to our spirits and our souls. When you have sex outside of marriage, it contaminates your spirit. It pollutes your soul. Don't do it. It is not that easy that you sex is not just putting your penis into the woman's vagina and then you are finished. It is a spiritual contract. The saddest thing is that this person will sleep with you and then he will not marry you and then he's gone. Don't do it, please, please, please don't do it. If he 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 cannot wait until he marries you before he takes, let him go. He's not correct to be a man. He's not. There are serious implications. So you, you allow him to sleep with you. Okay. So if he doesn't enjoy it, then what do you do? Dear young lady. He says if you don't allow him to sleep with you, you marry because he will not buy goods he haven't tested. All right. Okay. Let him understand that he should hold his own penis and test it. If he has any sweetness in his penis, then that is it. He will be okay in the marriage. The sweetness is not in you. It is in him. Oh, it's, it's in his, his own self. It's in his own, his own self. Right? So if he tests you, he sleeps with you, and now he says, I don't like. What do you do? He walks away. And then you wait for the next person who will come and test drive you. Do you know that even in the car industry, right? The car that is used for test drive is not the same one they sell. <laughs> The car that is used for test drive is not the same one they sell. And that the one that is used for test drive, after a period of time, they reduce their price, sometimes even to half price and sell it. Because it is not new. Because it has been used for test drive. When you want to buy any equipment, right? Sometimes you see that there is one that has been marked X display. X display. When it is X display, the price is lowered because it is X display. It has been used. It has been tested. How many of you women want to go around with X display on your forehead? Customer returns. You want you want to go around as a customer returns. Other people have tried you. They didn't like and they, they returned you. That's why you are now available to be bought by somebody else. Don't chip in yourself like that. Dear young lady, I know you are desperate to get married, but don't cheapen yourself. 
don't chip in yourself. If he has to test drive you before he marries you, he's not serious. He only wants sex. Because it is not everything we test drive that we buy automatically. Most of the things we test drive, we don't buy. To be honest, most of the things I have bought, I tested the other one, left that one, and then I chose a new one. Even perfumes and things. I go to perfume shop or all this. You spray this one. Hmm, it tastes it smells nice. Hmm. You you put it down and then you pick one that has not been opened. <laughs> I don't know if you've done it before. So that is how it is. I have seen it over and over. A woman will allow a man to sleep with her. Oh, because he wants to marry me. Because he says that's the only way he'll marry me. After he has slept with you, then you go to pick the other woman who did not allow him to sleep with her. And then you have been left. You are in the church. You are so angry. You are angry with the pastor for blessing their marriage. You are angry with the guy. You are cursing. You are, you know, you are depressed. You are sad. And a spirit of fornication has been passed on to you as well. Don't do it. Okay? Don't do it. So let, let me try and get back on track. It is the man who must find a woman. It is a man who must find a woman. So you men, go out there and get married. Go and find women and marry them. It, it is your job as a man to find a woman to marry. Now, if it is your job as a man to find a woman, then you have to organize yourself. It's not just going about with your mouth saying, I will marry you. That's not what I mean. If it is your job to find a woman, that means that it is your job to create the atmosphere, the environment. You are not just going into a relationship. You are going to marry somebody who will come and live with you for life. So you must create the nest that you are bringing the woman into. You must create a suitable home, a suitable environment. You must have a good job. You must be matured enough spiritually and emotionally. You must be prepared for that. And then you must step out boldly and confidently. Prayerfully, having identified who you think is right, and then you approach them, you talk about it. You, it is the man who must take the step. When you go and you are bounced, you come back, you re reorganize, and then you go for the next one. Sometimes the same person actually may bounce you one, may bounce you two, but when you come at third time, they think you are serious, and then they give in to you. So even when the same person bounces you, it doesn't mean that you must just walk away forever. No, try again. If you try and don't succeed, try again. Try the same person over and over. If you see that uh, this is becoming embarrassing, then you move to the next person. One thing I want you to understand is that there is no, there is no one person for every... How do I put it? There is no one person for anybody. You understand? Sometimes people say that eh, I found my rape. That means that there is only one person who, who is fit to marry one person. No. I am happy I'm married to my wife. My wife is a wonderful woman. I love her. But I believe if I had not married her, I could have married somebody else and we could still have had a good marriage. My wife is not the only good woman on earth. My wife is not the only spiritual woman on earth. She's not the only, only, only hardworking woman on earth. She's not the only ministry material wife on earth. No, there are many people out there. So some people think that I mean, if it is not, if it is not a uh, uh, Cindy, then then it's not. Uh, they, it cannot happen again. It's a lie. If Cindy does not work, move on to Gifty. If Gifty does not work, move on to uh, uh, Antoinette. If Antoinette, <laughs> if Antoinette does not work, keep on trying until you win, until you succeed. If Antoinette does not work, move on to uh, uh, Rebecca. If Rebecca does not work, move on to... But you too, if you have moved from to one, two, three, four, five, and everybody's bouncing you, you haven't done your homework well. You've got to go back and regroup proper, proper. You are not doing your homework well. Because it is not normal that everybody... That maybe you have a spirit wife. <laughs> it is not normal that everybody's bouncing you like that. There is something wrong. There's something wrong. Okay, so... I don't believe that one person is made for one person. Now, if that person doesn't marry you, then you are finished. No, 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 no. You can marry somebody. My wife would have done. I always tell her you, she could even have done better if you had married somebody else. You never know. You never know. You never know. So it's not like one for one strictly. 
it's not like that. Move on onto the next person. <laughs> Call it key. It's a move on onto. You give me the name. <laughs> you move on to Antoinette, then you move on to Janice, then you move on to this. But if you are moving on too much, it's a dangerous thing. It means you, you there's something wrong with you. Why all the women are rejecting you? There is something wrong with you. So you've got to work on but you've got to make the step. Make the step as a man. Take the step. Go and pursue the woman. Don't just sit down. Some of you men are just there. Da, every day you are just there. You are always in church singing and dancing. These women have danced in front of you and danced and danced and danced. All you do is, oh, they should bring you baked fish yesterday and tomorrow. They should bring you baked beans tomorrow. They should bring you that. And you are taking their food and you are eating. And they are dancing in front of you. Dancing, dancing. You are not seeing anything. It is no good. You are not sensitive. You are not sharp. And you are wasting your own time as well. Don't forget that sometimes women think they are the only people who have a time clock on their bodies. Men also have a time clock. Look, dear young man, if you don't marry early, as you grow old, your sperms become weak. Your sperms are becoming weaker by the day as you are growing older. They are beginning to become some way, you see. So now, if you wait at 45, 50 before you marry as a man, when you fire, when you fire, all the bullets just drop in front of the gun and they are looking at you. They can't, they can't go far. They can't go far to go and hit the target. Then you are just there, sitting, okay? There are always exceptions, though. There are always exceptions. But it's better when you marry early. When you marry early, your bullets are sharp. They are fast. Once you shoot, phew, they are gone. Gone. All the way to target. All the way to target. Don't leave it too late. Don't leave it till you are too old before you marry. You, the men. I'm not talking about the women. Most of the time, these things happen to the women because it's not their fault. The woman cannot go and catch a man that are marrying you by force. If a man has not come to marry her, she is dead. And that's why I want us to be very, very sensitive with the woman. Because if a man has not come, there's nothing, there's nothing she can do. But the men, for every man, every woman out there who is not married, there is a man who is not being serious. There's a man who is being careless. There's a man who is not playing his role right. That's why that woman is there. That said, statistics also show that there are more women than men. Okay, statistics also show that there are more women than men. That means that if all the men even got serious and all got married, there will still be some women left. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. But I pray that you listening to me, you will not be part of those who are left. That you will definitely get somebody to marry you. You get somebody who loves you, who cares about you to marry you. In Genesis 2, Genesis 2, 21 to 24. Genesis 2, 21 to 24. He says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. Are we sharing? Please, I'll be glad if you can just share it. Just share it. Click on your share button again so that somebody will get to hear this thing. It's very, very important. As we get into the details, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at things we are going to learn. So share it. Let somebody also get to hear it, okay? Just click on the share. You don't lose anything. Right. So, Genesis 2, 21 to 24. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, Now this is bone of my bones. It is not the woman who, who saw Adam and said, Ah, that is bone of my bone. No, no, no. It is not the woman who is supposed to do it. Sometimes as a woman, you can find a man. The man looks, Ooh, I want to marry this man. But you can't say it. I understand the cultural thing. You can't just say it. But pray about it. Look, the Bible says that the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. He directed like the course of a river. Look, you can pray until the man comes to tell you something. You can pray until the man comes to tell you something. You can pray about it. I told you, when I told my wife we wanted to get married, I, I wanted to marry her. She said she's too young. She's not thinking about it. I left it. We were just friends. We kept going and going and going. And then when we finished school, I came to Europe. She was in Ghana. And then as I, I told her, I said, can we get married? And then the father said, no, 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 no. She's, he's not going to allow. She must read her masters and read her this and that and that. She's not going to allow. I said, okay. Then at the point, the temptations here were becoming many. I was very handsome then. Eh? The temptations here were becoming very many. All sorts of, some women actually came to me and said, listen, forget about that woman in Ghana. Let's play in Ghana. When we are talking about international matches, you are thinking of local matches. Leave that woman and marry me here. And I didn't do it. 
there were so many temptations I had when I was here alone. So it got to a point I said, listen, if I don't marry, something is going to happen to me. I'm going to get dirty. So I called again. And I said that, can we get married? And then this time, the father agreed and we got married, right? But prior to that, I had sort of left it that, oh, if she is not going to allow, then, then there's nothing I can do, right? She said that when I left it and I was not saying anything, she started praying that I should say it again. And she prayed and she prayed and I said it again and then it worked, okay? So sometimes, look, God speaks to men. God speaks to human beings. If there is this man you think he must marry you and he is dancing about the bush, eh? take it to God in prayer. Hey, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to prayer. Write that man's name down. Kabatoya, Izamatuyama, Rabrosaka, Nabaye. Pray over him. You are my husband. I am not letting you go. Physically, I'm not allowed to come and propose you, but I am proposing to you in the spirit. And I am commanding you to return it in the physical. It will wake me. I believe in prayer. I believe in prayer a lot. I am nothing. I have nothing. But as for prayer, you can't take it away from me. I believe in prayer. And it works. Okay. So please, if you are a woman and you found a man, you think the man is correct. Not somebody's husband, please. Not somebody's husband. Or somebody who is already going out with somebody. The person is already going out with somebody and now you are going to the mountain to pray that he should leave that person and come and marry you. That one is witchcraft. That one is witchcraft. It's dangerous. Don't do it. So the person's already married and you are praying that he should leave his wife and come and marry you. You are a witch. You don't deserve a miracle. You deserve a kiss. So don't do that. But if the person is clean, there's nobody there and he's, he's, he's afraid to say it, pray. Pray and pray and pray. Pray because I believe that God answers prayer. God can touch the person's life and the person will just come close and say it. Okay. So Adam said, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. So it is the man's responsibility to name his woman. It is the man's responsibility to name his woman. Every man has the responsibility to name your woman. So you men out there, which woman have you named? And some of you men, you have a problem. You go around naming multiple women. No, every man has the right to name one woman at a time. One woman at a time. Have you named your woman? You have been a man since how long? By 18, you were a man. Have you named your woman? Adam named his woman. He says, she shall be called woman. This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, straight. Every man must be mature enough, responsible enough to name your woman. Call her. This is the person I want to marry. Speak to her about it and be strong about it. Be confident about it. Be bold about it. Some of you are even shy to let people know that this is the woman you want to marry. Most of such relationships do not work. When I was growing up, when I was coming up, right? When I was coming up, some of our friends were all over the place. They'll get into a relationship and then they will hide it. They don't want anybody to know that they are in a relationship. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Look, everything that is done in secret is of the devil. It is Satan who likes to do things in secret, right? Don't let anybody know. Don't let them before you realize. They have told somebody else. Don't let anybody know. Look, dear young woman, if a man comes to propose to you and he says, don't let anybody know, it is very likely he has proposed to 10 other women and has told them the same thing. Nobody should know. Are you running CIA or FBI? That nobody should know your operations. No. If you are, if the man wants to marry you, he should be proud about you. He should be able to walk out with you. He should be able to take you to town. He should be able to let everybody know, this is the woman I want to marry. Name your woman. Name your woman, dear man. Name your woman and take her out. Adam was not shy of Eve. He said, now this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. My heart has gone out to this woman. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. They shall be one flesh. 
The two shall be one. And so if you name your woman, the two of you should now be connected. When they see you, they must see the other person. When you talk, you must talk about the other person. You must not be shy. You must not hide it under wraps. You are going out, but it is a secret thing. We, we want to wait to see how it will go before we tell anybody. It's a lie. It will not work. Most of the men who do that are tricksters. If he tells you, I want to marry you, but don't tell anybody, he is a trickster. He is lying to you. He is deceiving you. If he says he wants to marry you, friends must know. Pastors must know. Everybody must know. It must be, it must be, it must be normal. It must be normal. You must enjoy that friendship. It must be normal. So the man must name his woman. Every man out there, please name your woman. Name your woman. Don't hide it. Don't pretend you are interested when you are not interested. Don't pretend you are not interested when you are interested. Name your woman. Propose to her. Don't, don't leave her hanging and hanging and hanging without you proposing. It is wickedness. You are playing with a woman's heart. It's no good. Let her know your intentions. Let her know your intentions. She's not a, a, a public space that you just hang around for the sake of hanging around. So don't waste her time. If you have an intention, let her know clearly so that you can both work towards it. If you have no intention to let her know, you can make friends with a woman without marrying her. I strongly believe in that. You can have a woman friend without marrying her. So if you have no intentions of marrying her, tell her. Tell her. I've told my wife before. At one point when we were friends, I loved her so much. I, did, I said, "Listen, even if I don't marry you, we'll be friends. Eh? We'll be friends." I, I remember saying that. I remember where I was standing when I said it. But eventually, I married her because uh, I just couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. Okay. I don't know if you've had enough for the day. I can cut it off here and then continue next week. Otherwise, I can add one more. I can just add one more. Let me add one more and then we break for the day. Okay. Right. Another thing you have to know. If you are going to marry and have a good marriage is that you must understand that life is a fulfillment of vision mm -hmm. listen to this carefully life is a fulfillment of vision the whole life we live it is a fulfillment of vision we marry therefore we marry somebody who will come and be part of the vision so we fulfill the vision together you don't marry for marriage sake Life, everybody who is alive today is fulfilling a particular vision. Even where you have no vision, you are fulfilling a no vision vision. Okay? So everybody is fulfilling a vision. So marriage is partnership for the fulfillment of vision. Marriage is partnership for the fulfillment of vision. So we marry a partner to work together in the fulfillment of our life's vision. You don't just marry a woman because she's beautiful. You marry her because she fits into your life's vision. And let me tell you one beautiful thing. As a woman, you don't marry a man because he has money. Because he says he will marry you. You also marry a man because he also fits into your vision. Women are not secondary humans who are just there with no vision. Waiting for a man of vision to come and pick them and carry them along. That is not a woman. A woman also has a vision. Look, from the beginning, he says that it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help meet. So the woman also has a vision and uh, as a help meet. Now, what that means is that the woman also has her own vision and her vision will help the man achieve his vision. So the two visions must mix together, right? I have seen people whose marriages are struggling because the man has become a pastor but he was initially a doctor. The woman had the intention of marrying a doctor. Her vision is to support a doctor. They marry, the man is a doctor. The man gets a call. The man leaves uh, 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 medicine to go and practice ministry and the woman says, I won't, I'll not be part of this. Because it is not my calling. It's not my purpose. I cannot be a pastor's wife. Look at the way pastor's wife get abused. Pastor's wife get disrespected. Get insulted. Pastor's wives are some of the most miserable people on earth. If, unless they don't tell you their story. 
People will come and pretend they love the pastor so much and then they push the pastor's wife behind. Many women in the church who want to bring even the man down will call the pastor's wife a witch. They will do everything against the pastor's wife to alienate her so that they can have access to the pastor. The pastor's wife, the, the job of a pastor's wife is completely a different job altogether. Right? They go through spiritual attacks, physical attacks, emotional attacks, all types of attacks. This woman said clearly, I do not want to be a pastor's wife. I wanted to be a doctor's wife. Therefore, if you have decided to be a, 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 pastor, a pastor, you go alone. We either break this marriage or I will not come to your church. Yes, it is a real situation. Is the woman wrong? I wouldn't say completely. Because every woman also knows what they were created for and what they were not created for. You don't put a woman into something she doesn't want to do. She's not called to do. Me. One reason why I married my wife. When I met her, right from the beginning, I knew I would eventually end up in ministry. I told her, God's call is upon my life. It was very visible, right? She also said, li listen to her vision. My wife's vision that she told me. She said that her intention in life, her vision in life, is to become an accountant, make a lot of money, and use it to support a, master, a, a, a husband who is a pastor. She wants to support a pastor in ministry. That's what she told me. We were young. We were young. She was like 14 or so. Young. And she told me this. So she had a vision for ministry. Not to become a pastor herself, but to support somebody who will be a pastor. And I had a vision to become a pastor in the long run. So our visions met. You see, her vision and my vision met. Every woman has a vision. Women were not created tabula rasa. That they have nothing in their head. Hey, just pick a woman and anything will go. No! There are some women who will not fit into your vision. Not every woman will fit into your vision. She may have big bottles. She may have big breasts. But she will not fit into your vision. It will frustrate you and bring you down. Not because she's a wicked woman. Not because she's an evil woman. She is in the wrong place. She is in the wrong vision. She's in the wrong place. Full stop. Not every woman will fit into every kind of marriage. You want to become a soldier. They can deploy you six months. You are, you are sitting in Afghanistan. Not every woman can take it. It's not because she's not faithful. Not every, some women, every evening, they want their husband to be around. Cuddling them. Holding them. She wants to marry somebody she can see every day. If you are going to go into soldier where you or army where you will be six months away, it will confuse her to frustrate her. So not every woman will fit into your vision. Our problem is, men, when we go to propose to women, oh, you are very beautiful, I would like to marry you. Stupid, completely out of, out of place. You don't marry a woman because she's very beautiful. Of course, it's good to marry. You don't marry a woman who looks ugly to you. Of course, my wife is not ugly to you. My wife is beautiful to me. Okay, right. So you marry a woman who is beautiful to you, but you don't marry her because she is beautiful. You marry her because she has a vision to fit into your vision, and you also have a vision to fit into her vision. But you will live a life that will be a blessing to her. She will live a life that will be a blessing to her, and the two of you will do life together and make progress together. So that when you come to the end of your life, you can look back and say, we have lived well. That is what it is about. That is what marriage is about. So you don't see a woman walking by the street, twisting her buttocks, and then you do she shield. Then she turns, and then you run to her. Ah, sister, you are so beautiful. I've been seeing you in the area. The way you walk. Ah, when I look at your shape, you have lost it. You, are, you, you have lost it. You don't marry a woman because of her shape. Shape does not cook. Shape does not pay calls. Shape does not advance life. Okay? Shape does not fit into vision. Unless maybe your vision in life is to be a porn star. Then you can, you can marry her shape and every day the shape will attract you. Fine. But life is more than sex. Life is more than beauty. Okay? Unless you are going to be a photographer. So life is far more than the physical appearances. God created man. God put bigger things into human beings more than how we look on the outside. So you don't, it is an insult to a woman that you want to marry her because of her physical appearance. The Bible says beauty is vain. 
Charm is deceptive. But the woman who fears God is to be praised. The woman is bigger than her outward appearance. The outward appearance can change. She has big breasts. God forbid. She can be involved in an accident or cancer or something. And they have to cut the breast away. Are you still going to love her? Are you still going to love her? She has a beautiful color. God forbid somebody can pour an accident or something upon her and then the, the color will change. The face will change. What do you do about that? We marry vision. We don't marry physical attributes. Physical uh, 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 beauty. Because that one can fade at any time. That one can go at any time. We marry vision. That is why you don't propose to strangers. This is why you don't propose to strangers. You must interact with the person. You must know who the person is. You must know their life's vision. They must also know your vision. The two of you must agree that our life's visions coincide. They work together. Every woman has something God has placed in them to support a particular vision, to help a particular life go forward. Every woman has it. There is no woman who is just there selling her beauty. No, the beauty is an extra thing. There's no woman who say, "As for me, nothing in my hand I bring, just my face." No, just my breast, just my buttocks, just my sexual organ. No, those are just extras. You don't marry because the woman looks sexy. No, it is an insult, my dear sisters. If a man approaches you because you are beautiful, he has a small brain. Don't give in to him. You are more valuable than how you look. Because how you look can change. How you look can change at any time. It is not how you look. It is who you are. People, a husband must approach you. A shooter must approach you wanting to marry you. Because of who you are. Not how you look. Because of who you are. That you have the attributes. You have the grace. You have the, 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 the wisdom, the understanding, the vision that will complement his vision. And then he also has a vision that will complement your vision. Because the fact is that if you have a vision to complement his vision and he has a vision to complement your vision, you both feel satisfied in their marriage. You both feel satisfied in their marriage. It is a very sad thing when you have a marriage and the man has been so successful and the woman is just out there feeling completely inadequate, completely lost in this world. No, we must do life in such a way that both the man and the woman at any point can keep their, put their hand on their, void, uh, their chest and say, I have lived the life. I am happy how I have lived. I am happy for how I have lived. Now, dear husband, listening to me, can your wife confidently say that she's happy, that she has achieved something with her life? Every wife should be able to say, I have achieved something. Not that I have just been sexed. No! You are bigger and better than that. A woman is not a sex toy. Sex is just an, an extra. You should be able to accomplish something great with your life. In that marriage, both the man and the woman, either together or separately. Sometimes the man can be, let's say, a doctor, the woman is an accountant, but some way, somehow, the doctor helps the accountant to fulfill her vision as an accountant. The accountant also helps the doctor to fulfill his vision as a doctor, and they are both happy and proud for the life they have lived. And that is why, when you marry a woman, you don't put her down and say that your vision is the kitchen. No woman's vision is the kitchen. The kitchen is part of our life. If the woman is the one who knows how to cook, praise the Lord, let her cook. But no woman's vision is the kitchen. Unless her vision is to be a caterer. That one, that is a vision. Okay? But the vision must support each other. We marry into vision. We don't marry into beauty. We don't marry into bodies. We don't marry into shape. We marry into vision. And so if that is the case, then you the man, you must be clear about your own life's vision. You the man must have a vision and you must be clear about what you are living for. Many men don't know what they live for. Many men are just there for the sake of being there. No vision. No vision. They just live from work to work. Okay, there's a job here, I've taken it. There's a job here, I'm taking it. Don't live for job. Live for vision. Of course, a job 
might be a means to the fulfillment of your vision but don't live just for job there are some people so what do you want to do any job and then they are there and they pick this job they are there they don't like it they switch to another job they don't like it they switch to another job you are more than that live for a vision so you see when you don't live for a vision and you just live from job to job that is why you see a beautiful woman you want her she might be beautiful but will she fulfill, help you fulfill your, your vision will she help you achieve anything with your life Many men have married beautiful women and they have been completely devastated. They have been completely destroyed because they married a beautiful woman. That doesn't mean beautiful women are bad. But marry a woman who fits into your vision. A woman who has passion to see your vision come to pass. And a woman that you also have a passion to see her vision come to pass. When you marry like that, the marriage is beautiful. If there is beauty in it, fine. If there's no beauty, you still enjoy each other. That is why sometimes you see some people, they are married. They are enjoying their marriage. And you can look at the woman and say, ah, this woman. So what did this man see in this woman that he married her? It is called vision. The woman may have K-leg legs, right? But she has a straight vision. And that is what made the man marry her. She may have Pimple face. Her face may not be attractive at all, but her vision is sharp. And the man will marry her. Some of you women, you are there. You think life is all about beauty. Instead of having a vision and living for it, you have gone chasing Brazilian hair, Indian hair, Pakistani hair, Ghanaian hair, all types of hair. You have put it on your head. You sit in front of the mirror from morning till evening, painting your face, thinking that making your face like a, 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 a whatever is what brings a husband. No, makeup does not bring a husband. Makeup at best will bring a sex partner. Somebody who will just come and marry your uh, beauty just to have sex with you and drop you. Yes, Michael uh, Obedia by saying there, Samson married into beauty and became nothing. Thank you very much. Samson had a vision in life. When he wanted to go and marry that beautiful woman, his parents told him that, no, your, it, it doesn't fit into your vision. Don't do it. He said, but she is beautiful. I want her. He was destroyed. You marry beauty, you will destroy yourself. If you marry vision and the vision has beauty, you are blessed. But even if you marry vision and the vision has no beauty, you are still blessed. Because we live for vision, we don't live for beauty. Beauty is vain and charm is deceptive. But the woman who fears God will be honored. Don't waste your life chasing women who look beautiful. And if you're a woman, don't waste your time improving on your beauty when you have not improved on your vision. You have no vision as a woman. You cannot pray. You cannot study. You can't read. You can't read your Bible. You can't study. You, you, you don't have any qualifications. You don't have any trade. You don't have anything you, you bring to the table and you are there painting your, your lips, standing by the roadside, waiting for a man to pick you. He will only sleep with you and drop you. If he marries you, he will continue to abuse you for life because you are of no value. You are only valuable during the five minutes of sex. After that, you are finished. A woman can be far more valuable than a five-minute sexual encounter. So upgrade yourself. Have the vision. Educate yourself as a woman if you can. Go to school if you have the head. If you don't have the head but you have the ability to learn some skill. Learn some skill. Learn hairdressing. Learn something. Learn. Learn something. But have something. Bring something to the table. Have the vision. This is what I want to do with my life. And this is what I want to do to help another person who will marry me also to go forward. Don't just say, nothing in my hand I bring, just my breast and my buttocks. No, no, no. When you do that, you will not be valued in that marriage. Many women are not valued in their marriages because they bring nothing to the table. That's why your husband can easily insult you. Oh, what do you have? What do you do? Nothing. What do you bring to the table? You bring nothing to the house. And it's your fault. Upgrade yourself. It's not too late. If you are even married, it's not too late. You can learn a course. Do something. Upgrade yourself. Support your husband's life. Vision. 
be an honorable something, not just by how you look, but by your worth, by your worth, by your worth. Upgrade yourself. Be strong. Okay, upgrade yourself. So we we marry a partner to work together for the fulfillment of life's vision, not just for beauty and for sex. If that were the case, some women would never be married. Because some women, when you look at them, you see that even a man is more, more beautiful than her. And yet some of those women really get the best marriages. Because they are smart. When they stand in the mirror and they see, mm, I don't look like the way these other women look. They commit themselves and they upgrade themselves. And when the men, top class men will come and say, mm, I want this one rather. Because where I am going, let me tell you a story. Right? In, in the very early stages. Was it during sixth form or after sixth form? I was with a certain evangelist and we're doing crusades in Ghana. I was leading praise and worship on the crusade team. And they pushed a, a certain lady. There was a lady who was also on the team. Very beautiful lady. Very fair colored. Very big. I mean, nice shape. Big breast, big shape. Nice. She was very, very beautiful. I don't want to mention her name. And I liked her too. She was very nice to me. And they said, oh, marry her. Marry her. <laughs> and at that time I was not as mature as I am now. So I told I told them straight in her presence. Because that woman, see, even though she was beautiful and all that, her education was not strong. I remember saying it clearly in everybody's presence that where God is taking me to, I need a woman who, if I am in, let's say I'm in, in the US, and I need some documents picked and processed and sent to me. Within a day, I can pick up a phone and say, listen, organize this document and send to me. I want a woman who is educated, who is smart, who understands some things. This woman doesn't go there. She doesn't have it. So I'm sorry, I can't marry her. And I liked her. I mean, God, God forgive me, but physically, she was physically more attractive than my wife at that time. My wife was very small then. I remember one day I was traveling with my wife when we married earlier at the beginning of our marriage. I was traveling with my wife. We got to the airport and they greeted me. Good morning, sir. Are you traveling with your daughter today? And I had to say, no, she's my wife. And then they apologized. That is how serious the matter was. My wife was very small. This one was really, really nicely made. But even though my wife was small, she had big spectacles and all that, the head and the heart. She had wisdom, she had knowledge, she had a heart for God. And that gave her the upper hand over the beautiful woman. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so it is not just your body that you bring. Upgrade yourself, go to school, learn something. Learn a trade. Start something on your own. Some of you women, women are sitting down waiting for somebody to come and marry you so they set you up. What a, what, what a waste of life. What a, don't do that to yourself. Start something on your own. Start something on your own. Before the man comes, you have something going. You have value. You have value to bring to the table. Look, Abigail brought value to David's life. When he was on his way to go and kill Nabal, Abigail came to meet him. The kind of counsel that Abigail gave David, David said, if I must become a king, I need a counselor like this in my bedroom. So he went immediately, uh, uh, Nabal died. David sent for, for her to be brought up so he could marry her. Because at some level, you need some level of wisdom. Sometimes I ask myself, if I look, even, even, even today, let, let, let me just confess some things. Sometimes I look at group pictures. My wife will be standing with some ladies from church or anywhere, and I look at them, and I just look, oh, this woman is beautiful. This one, this one is powerful. But I look at it. How many of them have the weight that my wife has? The, 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 the intelligence, the wisdom, the spiritual depth. I just look at it and I just, oh, I just, I was telling her just a few days ago. I was just telling her, I said, look, I look at women. I can see many beautiful women, but I cannot find a woman who is as heavy as you. Therefore, I, you, you always win. You still win as my number one. Okay. As a woman, make yourself that. Upgrade yourself. Be strong. Be, have so much value. Have so much value that when a man sees you, he cannot let you go. No matter what people do, no matter what circumstances come, he cannot let you go because you are, you are, you are, you are deep, you are strong. 
upgrade yourself. Upgrade yourself. And you men look for the women who have vision because we marry into vision. We marry into vision. In Genesis 2 15, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So there was a purpose, there was a vision first. It was further down, verse 20, that the Bible says that, and out of the ground, verse 19 to 20. This is so verse 15, you have a garden to dress and keep. You go down verse 19 to 20, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, brought them unto Adam uh, uh, to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the rough vision still being fulfilled. And Adam gave names to all the cattle of the air, the fowl of the air, uh, every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was no help meet. Then you see, so it was not recognized that he had no help meet until he was fulfilling his vision. If you are a man, you don't have a vision, you are not pursuing any vision, you have no business going to propose to any woman, you will become a burden. If you don't know where you are going, and if you are not actively pursuing where you are going, don't go and disturb any woman. Okay, if you know where you are going, maybe you may not have it. But you have a clear vision and you are working towards it. You are free to propose. But if you don't know where you are going, then do not waste your time at all. Do not waste your time at all. In, in, in Proverbs 19, 18, he says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the Lord happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't have a vision, there will only be frustration. Look, many marriages where they are always fighting and fighting and fighting, it's because there is no vision. There is no vision. So they, their lives have come to a halt. They don't know what they are doing. It's like, what are we here for? What are we doing? There is confusion. There is chaos. You will fight if there is no vision and you marry. So marry with vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Make sure that you have a vision. You have a vision. In Amos 3.3, he says that two cannot work together except they be agreed. Both the man and the woman must agree upon the, each other's vision and fit into it. So that every time we are in this marriage, we know where we are going. We know what we are pursuing. You know what? You know one thing that made me become a pastor? One thing that made me become, let me tell you. I told my wife right when I met her in six form that the call of God is on my life. I will become a pastor. But we got married. We came to England. I was working in education. She was also working. We were earning good money. We were enjoying ourselves. I kept just playing around. I wasn't taking the ministry work serious. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. You know what? My wife started pestering me. You've got to start this ministry. You've got to go into this ministry. I married you because of ministry. You've got to go into this ministry. You told me you will become a pastor. You cannot delay it. He, she pushed me and pushed me until I agreed. And I started this work and I resigned from my secular work to come away because of vision. And before that, we had all sorts of issues. But immediately I came into the vision, a lot of things fell in place. So vision is important. Vision is important. That there must be an agreement in the vision. It brings unity. It brings unity. It brings unity. Uh, it brings unity. I think that I would end here, right? I don't want to keep you for too long. God willing... I would take it from the vision again, God willing, next week, and then we will we will continue. Okay, so make sure that you have a date with me next week, same time. Just come on, and then we will. But before you go, why don't you just click on your share button for me? Just do me a favor, click on the share button. Let somebody hear of it. Let somebody see it. Let it bless somebody else. Okay. Now let me pray with you. Maybe you have been listening to me. Two prayers will be praying. You are not saved. You are not born again. You don't have the assurance of going to heaven. This is a good opportunity to make heaven your home. Why don't you give Jesus the opportunity to become your Lord and your God? God bless you. God bless you, Lillian Kobe. Naughty. God bless you so much. God bless you. Right. So, if you are not born again, why don't you just speak to Father? I come to you just as I am. I acknowledge that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me for all my sins. Jesus, I believe in you. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of every sin. Wash me clean. Make me your own. Fill me with your spirit. Use me and lead me till I meet you face to face. Thank you for saving me. 
in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you are now born again. And I pray that the Lord will cover you in the blood of Jesus. I pray that you will be established in the kingdom. That you will grow in the Lord. In Jesus name. Now, what you need to do is to find a good Bible believing church around where you live. Right? And establish yourself. If you live around London, South East England, come to our church. Shine Ministries. We meet in Bexley Heath. In the Bexley Heath Academy. The main assembly or upper main assembly hall. We meet there. It, it will be a glorious time. We meet Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Wednesdays, we have home cell in the evenings, uh, 7 p.m. And then Saturday, uh, Friday, 7 p.m. We have a prayer miracle service at Bexley Academy. It is right in the center of Bexley Heath. Right behind the that You can't miss it. So why don't you just come and visit us or become part of our church? If you live in this area, if you live in North London, you can always go to Gethsemane, Gethsemane Miracle Church. And there are other good churches around where you are, wherever you are listening to me from. I am telling you, there is a good church where you are. So forget about all the nonsense people say about pastors and about churches. There is a good church near where you are. Let God lead you. Go to a good church. Submit yourself to the pastor. Don't be a trouble causer in the church. Don't be a fighter. Rather be the one who helps. Strengthen your pastor's hand. Be a faithful church member. Be committed so you can grow in the Lord. Don't don't join in foolish things that people some people do. Not everybody is in church as a Christian. Some people are agents to cause problems in the church. Don't commit, connect yourself to them. Connect yourself to the Lord and the Lord is going to bless you. You will grow. You will be awesome. Because there are very good people in church as well. So connect yourself to some of these wonderful people. The Lord bless you till I come your way again. But you've been listening to me. Maybe you are not married. You are trusting God for marriage. Let me pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this brother or this sister who is trusting you, O oh God, for a married partner. In Jesus' name, I pray that you will guide their steps, O oh God. Lead them, guide their steps to the right person, O oh God. I pray that the scales will fall off the eye of whoever is supposed to see them but has refused to see. Let them recognize. Let them begin to feel. And let them be bold enough to take the right step. I declare that nobody listening to me who wants to marry will be left behind. Let your grace be multiplied upon them. Open a door for them. Help them to get married in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you've been listening to me as well. You are married but your marriage is struggling. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That grace will be released. I speak peace into that marriage. I command every storm to die. I command every evil seed planted in that marriage that is germinating and causing problems to be uprooted and destroyed. I command every negative word spoken that is haunting the marriage to die out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic presence in that home that is causing pain and frustration, I bind you and I cast you out of that place. Let the presence of the Holy Ghost fill that home. Let peace enter that home. Let love return to that home. Let joy return to that home in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And even if you are listening to me, your marriage is doing well. I pray that the grace of God will continue to be with you. That your marriage will do even better. Let the peace of God increase in your marriage. Let the blessing of God increase upon your marriage. Let the prosperity of God increase upon your marriage. Let the presence and the glory of God increase upon your marriage. Your marriage will not die. It will not fail. It will stand. It will thrive. It will do well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now God bless you all. I'll be glad if you can just share this thing, share it so that others will be blessed. To be on your wall, some of your friends will get to know so that they'll be blessed. God willing, next week, next week, afternoon time between 12 and 1 p.m. Uh, uh, GMT, I will be up again. Make a date with me. We will continue with this thing. I believe that you will be blessed. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace until I come your way again. It's been Pastor Derek and Pastor Sally behind the scenes saying we love you, walk in love, get married, enjoy your marriage, serve the Lord, and be blessed. We will see you again. Bye-bye.